Let's work through a long example of a jointly Gaussian pair of random variables. So let's say x and y are jointly Gaussian. I'm going to give you the five parameters at the outset. Okay, so um, usually we specify these by their means. Mu x, here's three. Mu y is minus one. The variance of x is four. The variance of y is one. And finally, the correlation coefficient is minus one fourth. And equivalently, I could have told you the covariance, but here I gave you the correlation coefficient. And we're going to define two new random variables through these linear functions. So w is x minus 4y plus 1, z is 2x plus 4y. What I want to know at first are what are the means of w and z? And the interesting thing about this is that I don't even need to know that they're jointly Gaussian. I can just use this linearity of expectation formula whenever I want. So I don't need Gaussianity for this to work. So I just write out the formula, which is that the expectation of ax plus by plus c is just a times mu x plus b times mu y plus c, because mu x here is the mean of x, mu y is the mean of y. So I'm just going to plug in mu w. I'm trying to find out the mean of x minus 4y plus 1. So that's 1 times mu x plus minus 4 times mu y plus 1. That's going to be 1 times 3 plus minus 4 times minus 1 plus 1, and that's 8. Mu z, that's going to be the mean of 2x plus 4y. So that's going to be 2 times mu x plus 4 times mu y, and that's going to be 2 times 3 plus 4 times minus 1, and that's 2. Okay, what about the variances of w and z? Again, I don't need joint Gaussianity to figure this out. I already have everything I need. So the variance of a linear function, we have this formula from before, that if I'm interested in variance of ax plus by plus c, well, the c doesn't matter, it's just a shift. I end up with a squared times sigma squared plus b squared times sigma y squared plus 2ab rho xy sigma x sigma y. And the reason I have that there is that's the covariance of x and y. Okay, so for w, I have x minus 4y plus 1. I want the variance, so that's 1 squared times sigma x squared plus minus 4 squared times sigma y squared plus 2 times 1 times minus 4 times rho xy times sigma x times sigma y. Overall, that's 1 times 4 plus 16 times 1 minus 8 times minus 1 fourth times 2 times 1. That's 24. For sigma z squared here, I have the variance of 2x plus 4y. That's 2 squared times sigma x squared plus 4 squared times sigma y squared plus 2 times 2 times 4 times sigma x, sorry, rho xy times sigma x times sigma y. 4 times 4 plus 16 times 1 plus 16 times minus 1 fourth times 2 times 1. And in a coincidence, this is 24. Okay, so that's just a coincidence. They could have been different. So in this case, they just ended up being the same. Okay. So we just showed on the previous slide that the mean of w is 8, the mean of z is 2, the standard, sorry, this uh, variances are 24. And so what I want to know now is the correlation coefficient. So let's say I want to calculate the correlation coefficient between w and z. I know the correlation coefficient between x and y. I need to update it for w and z. Okay, so the definition says I need the covariance divided by the standard deviation, okay? Well, the covariance of a linear function, we also have a formula for that. I'm just going to remind us of it in the notation we're using. So the covariance of ax plus by plus c and dx plus ey plus f, that'll be ad sigma x squared plus ae plus bd times rho xy sigma x sigma y, and plus BE sigma y squared. And this middle term, again, is just the covariance. All right. We want the covariance of W and Z. So that's going to be covariance of X minus 4Y plus 1 and 2X plus 4Y. That's 1 times 2 times sigma X squared plus 1 times 4 plus minus 4 times 2 times sigma, sorry, rho XY, sigma X, sigma Y plus minus 4 times 4 times sigma y squared. So that's 2 times 4 minus 4 times minus 1 fourth times 2 times 1, 
minus 16 times 1, and that's minus 6. So if I plug that in above, I get minus 6 over root 24 times root 24, and that's minus 6 over 24, minus 1 fourth. Okay, so in this case, the correlation coefficient stayed the same, which is kind of strange. Again, it's just a, a coincidence. It's something I designed for this problem, but it could have ended up changing, okay? Finally, let's work out the um, conditional PDF. So we already know the correlation coefficient. I now want to work out the conditional PDF of um, W given that Z takes a particular value, okay? So the conditional PDF of a jointly Gaussian random variable given the other one is Gaussian, and its mean is the conditional mean of W given Z is equal to little z, and that turns out to be for a jointly Gaussian mu W plus rho WZ, sigma W over sigma Z, Z minus its mean. The variance is just the conditional variance, which is 1 minus um, rho squared in this case times sigma w squared. Okay, so these this is a formula from the previous video for the conditional PDF of a Gaussian. So we can just work out these two formulas. So if I want to know the conditional mean, I just plug in 8 plus minus 1 fourth times root 24 over root 24 times z minus 2. Okay, that's the mean of z. And so I get minus z over 4 plus 17 over 2. For the conditional variance, again, I'm just going to plug in the numbers. We have 1 minus minus 1 fourth squared times 24, and that's 15 over 16 times 24, so 45 over 2. Overall, we get that w given z is Gaussian minus z over 4 plus 17 over 2 with the variance 45 over 2. So given that z is equal to 6, what if I want to know the probability that w is less than 7? Okay, so that's what I want to know. Is What's the probability w is less than 7 given that I know z is equal to 6? So I can write this out. It turns out that since I know this conditional PDF is Gaussian, I can just use the phi function. So I'm just writing out these parameters. So here I have 7 minus the mean over the standard deviation. And the reason I can write those out is that I know that w given z equals 6 is going to be Gaussian, and the mean is going to be plugging in minus 6 over 4 plus 17 over 2, and variance 45 over 2. So I just plug those in to get the probability that a Gaussian is less than a value, and that it always comes from the phi function. I'm going to simplify on the top. I'm going to get, in this case, 7 minus 7 over root 45 over 2. That just simplifies down to 5, 0. And 5, 0 is special because of the symmetry, so I know it's 1 half. Okay? And that's the end of this example. Um, you can basically follow these calculations to do any kinds of calculations that you're interested in um, with similar questions for jointly Gaussians. You'll just end up with different numbers.